You know, we've read recently, in fact, on Wednesday night, I think we referred to, uh, to Romans chapter 4, where it, God makes it plain through the apostle that Abraham's children are based upon the principle of faith. That is, it doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or Gentile, if you are a believer, you are Abraham's child. Because God was bringing forth a family of those who were begotten of that faith. And so, this, this sheds even a different light, and I believe we can see that in this passage. It takes this away from simply being a historical example and makes it a message that is relevant to you and to me today. It is a message to us from God. So don't just say, well, this is something real neat that God said to some people a long time ago, and it's a nice example, and isn't that nice? No, God wants to talk to you and to me today. All right, let's listen to what he said here. But you, O Israel, my servant. Now, that alone conjures up the account of how the name Israel came to be in the first place. You remember what happened? You remember how, where that happened? You had a man named Jacob who was the grandson of Abraham, heir to the promises but he was a bit of a rascal, un not unlike some of us. He was a schemer. He was just somebody trying to scrabble his way through life and make his way and lots of obstacles, lots of problems. And he reached a point in his life where he was terrified. He was going back home. But he had had a serious falling out with his brother. He cheated him. And uh, he, he just figured he was, in for a, he was in for a rough go. And somehow, I don't know how he knew who this man was. It says he wrestled with a man at night. He was alone on this particular occasion, just on the, on the cusp of facing this situation. Somehow he knew that this was a divine encounter. I don't know how he knew this, but he wrestled with him. And when it became almost daylight, this angel, as it turns out, said, let me go, it's almost daylight. What did Jacob say? I will not let you go unless you bless me. There was a sense of desperation. There was a sense in him of his own weakness and his own need. That's a characteristic of God's people. Today, if you feel a need and a desire to serve God, you ought to be shouting. Because the people that are not God's chosen don't feel that. They don't have that kind of a sense about them. God does not go out looking for the strong and the mighty and the, the self-confident and the self-righteous. He looks for people who are in need. That's who his heart is drawn to. And as a result of this encounter that Jacob had with the angel, God, God changed his name. And the name Israel was given to him because as a prince with God, you've prevailed. So, this, so God is addressing this kind of people. There's a spiritual type there that is passed on to all of God's chosen people down through the ages. Israel, my servant. Jacob. Now, I realize that there are choices. There are choices to surrender and to believe that we, as far as we're concerned, we exercise. But I'll tell you, when you look behind that, you're going to see that God does the choosing ultimately. You can argue the theology behind that, but I'm going to say God, he's addressing people, he says, whom I have chosen. God is the initiator. Boy, that's a, that takes a load off my shoulders as though I have to somehow hang on for dear life to God. Thank God he does the choosing. If you're his this morning, it's because he chose you. And he chose you knowing all about you. There isn't a thing about you that God didn't know up front. It's not like some of us when we sign something and then we've discovered the fine print later to our chagrin. There's no fine print. God knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows things about you that you don't know yet. That will cause you great shame and embarrassment when you find out. And I would say the same thing about me. I better put, make that us. But God knows those he calls. And he displays his character by doing it anyway. 
Praise God. Praise God. He knew all about Jacob and all about his, his trickery, all about his weaknesses. He says, I've chosen you. You descendants of Abraham, my friend. Now again, in the light of the New Testament, who are the descendants that he's talking about? Is that just Jews? No, that's anybody here that God has called to himself. Praise God. We are descendants of Abraham. He is our father so far as the pride and the purpose of God is concerned. We are as much God's chosen people as any Jew who ever lived. Praise God. It has nothing to do with, uh, with these physical things. It's a spiritual descent, isn't it? Whom I have chosen. Now look at the language that he uses. As, I took you from the ends of the earth. Well, you know, that phrase, that expression right there brings us into it, doesn't it? You look back a few verses, and you'll talk about how God has sought to make his, his, his name known in the earth. He's declared that I'm the one who knew, who has arranged everything. I, I was there at the beginning. I'm here now. I'll be there at the end. And he says in verse 5, the islands have seen it and fear. The ends of the earth tremble. So he's talking about you know, he's talking about the Philippines. He's talking about all the, the remote places of the earth where people live. He's not talking about Palestine, not confining his remarks to Palestine, is he? I've called you from the ends of the earth. He goes on to describe the idolatry of the people from the ends of the earth, but yet out of that, God has called a people. He has chosen and called a people unto himself. Praise God. It's exactly like Douglas said, we're going to get to the end. And we're going to look back and we say, praise God, you worked. You worked in spite of me. You worked in spite of every circumstance. You are my God. I've put my trust in you, but you were the one who apprehended me. And you have done all that's been done. I praise you. I have chosen you. I took you from the ends of the earth. I called you. Kind of sounds like God's in charge, like God's able. Praise God. Doesn't that sound pretty good to you? It sounds awesome to me. I called you. I said, you are my servant. We didn't, say, we didn't volunteer. Oh, God, I want to be your servant. Oh, please, pretty please. I said, God has made a declaration. You are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Think, just ponder those words, all of these declarations of God over and over. Think about the people to whom he was declaring these things. They surely felt very small, very weak. They, didn't, they looked around and things didn't look good. 